Proverbs 28. We're going to start with this morning, verse 4. Those who forsake the law praise the wicked, but such as keep the law contend with them. A lot in that, isn't there? Those who forsake the law, those who forsake the word of God. Hey? You're praising the wicked. You're giving glory to the wicked and the sinner. But, such as keep the word of God, we contend with the wicked and the sinner. That's why when you walk with the Lord in the light of his word, there seems to be that contention. Hey? As I was saying to Brother Samuel this morning, before the meeting, we were talking on the scriptures and I said, I'm into body language, not the world's body language. The world's body language is, is, is a failure. They, they don't get true results. They're judging people. Oh, you should have seen the way he was standing. You should have seen the way she was looking. You should have seen. It's all external, isn't it? But the body language of the body of Christ, the oracles of God, spot on every time, perfect. And when you speak the oracles of the Lord, I tell you, you're gonna you're gonna see a reflex action somewhere along the line, and it will either be good or it will be bad. There's no middle ground, amen? So, let's go on with a bit of news. Before we start the message today, I heard a saying the other day, extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. And don't we have that? You know, we, we as the people of God, we make extraordinary, extraordinary, hey? We make supernatural claims and we have the, uh, the extraordinary evidence in the word of God. We have the evidence that the word of God has said it hundreds and thousands of years before it even comes to pass. Before even the people of the earth see it, it's already written. It's thus says the Lord. That's, isn't it, is, it's so extraordinary. Our life as followers of the Christ is an extraordinary life. It's just extraordinary what the Holy Ghost has done and can do in human beings. Absolutely extraordinary. Hey? Beautiful. So we can rejoice that we're not bogged down in some boring religion. But we're walking in the light of the word of the Most High God. And we know that people in the world today, they call today Mother's Day. They say it's Mother's Day today. Hey? But once we receive the light of the word of God, we don't find Mother's Day in the scriptures, do we? So we bypass that. We go to something bigger, better and deeper. We go to the scriptures and it says that it's Mother's Day every day and it's Father's Day every day, Father in heaven and it's Dad's Day every day and it's the children's day every day. According to scripture, the children are to respect their mum every day. The children are to respect their dad every day. The wife is to respect the husband every day. The husband is to love the wife every day. Amen. And we're all to respect the Lord every day. The R1 in the, in the uh, Filipino language and dialect. The AR1. Hey? Respect God. How are you going to respect God? Hey? What are you going to fast? What are you going to do? You're going to walk a million miles for one of his smiles, mammy. What are you going to do? Come the middle of the year or Easter time or the rabbit season, you're going to walk down the street and march for one day and half a day. Is that how you're going to respect God? 
Now we respect God, we honour God and we praise God and we glorify God by obeying him. Amen? And one more thing, or a couple of more things before we start the main message today and that is I was reading a Uniting Church magazine called The Journey and it had an article in there and it just grieved the spirit in me, just grieved the spirit. And it said, Blessed are the carers, for they shall see God. <laughs> and it was talking about uh, uh, family carers, you know, that are unpaid. Unpaid family carers looking after someone in the family that's not well, they're not getting paid for it. 2.6 million carers in this country, unpaid, looking after a family member. Right? And when I read it, blessed are the carers, for they shall see God. Now, oh, oh, I'm pretty sure that's saying they will go to heaven. 2.6 million. How many out of the 2.6 million carers follow Jesus? Follow him. F listen, follow him. Follow him. That's the big cruncher. Follow. Not I've met him. Not I know him, not I know of him, but not I did know him, but follow him. Follow, follow, follow the leader. Follow him, him, him. Follow Elohim. Follow Jesus. That's the cruncher. That's, that's where it's all pivoting, isn't it? Are we following Jesus? Or do we just read about him or, or, or know about him? Or do we follow him? That's what makes the walk extraordinary extraordinary awesome i couldn't let go of it for a billion dollars cash today a billion someone had a trunk uh, 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 parked outside here in the car park said a billion dollars in there pastor it's all yours if you don't open your mouth and mention the name jesus ever again i'd say look fella that's not enough. <laughs> That's peanut shells. <laughs> I'm an infinite hair. You're an infinite hair. Infinite hair. Who wants to be a millionaire? Why would you want to be a millionaire when you're an infinite hair? So, blessed are the carers. Look, I, I say bless the carer, but I will never say they will all see God. Hey? Because the scriptures say, without holiness you won't see God. It's a promise, my friend. Is Jesus your number one? Or is it your family and friends? Hey? Without holiness you won't see God. It's a promise, my friend. Without holiness, you won't see God. It's a promise, my friend. Is Jesus your number one or is it your family and friends? Is Jesus your number one or is it the money sitting in the bank? Which one is it? Eh? Without holiness, you will not see God. That's what the scripture says, isn't it? And we go by thus says the Lord, hey? not thus says the community. Thus says the government. And one more piece of news before we go into the message. The news this week on the television, breast cancer victim dies and she and the remaining fundraisers said and quoted, well, and they gathered all together and the cancer victim, she died of breast cancer or whatever. And this is sad. This is sad. We all die sooner or later in the flesh. It's best to die in Christ before we die in the flesh, uh, literally, and leave the planet. Anyway, the quote was, well, she will be looking down from above and she'll be pleased with our efforts. So that translated to me, once again, that the ignorance of the people of the world, they think all ailing people are going to go to heaven. Right? If someone's doing a good cause on earth, 
they're going to go to heaven. Hey, so we're what? Working our way. I'm just working my way back to you, Lord. Uh, are we working our way to heaven? Are we buying our way to heaven? We know. Only the drug addicts believe you can buy a stairway to heaven. We're not buying our way to heaven. We're not working our way to heaven. We're obeying our way to heaven. Amen? Yes. We're obeying for Hebrews 5.9. What does it say? Hebrews 5.9. It says that Jesus the Christ is the author and the finisher of eternal salvation for all who obey. Amen? For all. For all who obey. So let's go into the message today and we're going to be reading. Once again, we will go back to Colossians chapter 2. We're doing the message of the cross, the sequel, which is the Nazarene nailed it and we're deconstructing the word nailed. Colossians 2, verse 11. Today is the 12th, the 5th, 2013. JTCM, Jesus the Christ Ministries Mission Sunday Meet. Amen. Amen. Colossians 2, 11. In him you were also circumcised with the circumcision made without hands by putting off the body of the sins of the flesh by circumcision of Christ, buried with him in baptism in which you also were raised with him through faith in the working of God who raised him from the dead. And you, being dead in your trespasses and the uncircumcision of the flesh and your flesh, he has made life together with him, having forgiven you all your sins. Having wiped out the handwriting of the requirements that was against us, which was contrary to us. And he has taken it out of the way, nailed it to the tree. Colossians 2.15, and this is our final verse today. Having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. We run with the victor. We run with the Lord Jesus, the one who made a public spectacle of the devil, the powers of darkness, and there remains no more excuse for me or for any other human on the earth saying, I can't do it, I'm trying my best. That cannot be. When you say, I'm trying my best, you're saying that nothing has been done. You're saying that Jesus never accomplished what he accomplished. But he accomplished it all, didn't he? At the tree. Jesus did it all. All to him I owe. Hey? Sin had left a crimson stain, but he washed it. White as snow. So we're deconstructing that word nailed. And we're moving in the sequel now. The Nazarene nailed it. And didn't he nail it once and for all? For every one of us. Every single one of us can walk in the victory. We can be overcomers. And we can be more than overcomers. More. In other words, we can... We can become mature and we can know the word and walk in the word and overcome temptation and know as the Spirit leads that the Lord makes a way for every temptation. He makes a way out. If we're looking for it, he'll show us the way out. No excuse. And we can overcome. And then we can become matured and strong by way of, of, of uh, walking in the Word. And then we become 
more than overcomers. And then we're able to teach others. We're able to lead others into overcoming. Because we are more than overcomers. So we're deconstructing that word nailed. And we're getting a, a exposition, if you will, of that word nailed. And the end was for neutralized. And Jesus, he neutralized the powers of darkness. He neutralized. He, he, he made way for us to overcome. He, he empowered us to overcome. N was for neutralize. A was for accomplish that he has accomplished it. We're not really accomplishing anything. We're just following him. That's all Jesus said to his disciples when he called them, didn't he? He said to them, follow me. And, and, and they obeyed. They obeyed. And they dropped what they had. There was none of this, oh, look, I've got to do this and I've got to do that. Follow me. Hey? So he has accomplished. He has provided. He has... He has equipped us. He has qualified us. N-A-I-L. N for neutralize. A for accomplish. I for intervened. That Jesus intervened in the situation. We looked at that last week. That the Lord Jesus mediated. There's only one mediator between Father and mankind. And it's Jesus, hey? He has no co-redeemer as the Roman Catholics think. There's no mediatrix. There's only Jesus, hey? I must tell Jesus all of my troubles and problems, Brother Clifford. Jesus will help me. Jesus alone, hey? We need to look to him. He's jealous. He's a jealous God. When we look to the author and the finisher, author and the finisher of the phone, author and finisher, hey? look to the author and the finisher, lest we grow weary in our soul. And we grow weary, if we're not in the word, we grow weary. Because the devil is very cunning. And our soul, soul, mind, will and emotions. And they all start to waver, don't they? And we, and we all end up, uh, we end up pear-shaped. It all turns to mud when we're, not, when we're not staying in the Word. It all turns to mud, doesn't it? It all falls apart. And the devil comes in and says, oh, and he plants seeds of doubt all over the place. Oh, it's not really like that. No one can be perfect. There's only one who's perfect, and that's Jesus. Well, perfect, according to Scripture, means obedient. That's perfection in the eyes of God. So today, we're going to be looking at the letter L in the word now. And that letter L means linked. Linked. That Jesus linked us. He was the one that linked us up with Father. We, we lost contact. Hey? We lost contact in Eden. You say, but I wasn't born then. <laughs> Let's turn in our Bibles to Jeremiah, please. Jeremiah. Jesus did it all. Jeremiah, let's go there. Hey? He linked us. He linked us up. We lost contact with our father because of Adam and Eve. Jeremiah 1, verse 5. Jeremiah 1, verse 5. Hey, before I formed you in the womb, listen, 
I knew you. <laughs> Come on. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I set you apart. And I ordained you. I appointed you a prophet to the nations. Come on now. That's a big call. I remember when the Lord called me. I heard him call for me by the vessel of an indigenous man. And I remember when the Lord called me, he said to me, he said the same thing. I've called you, I knew you before you entered the womb, and I've called you, I've sanctified you, I've put you aside. You will run with my message and none other, and you will be a prophet unto the nations. And I thought, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I, I must be losing it here. This could not be. That's going to take a lot of money to travel the nations. A lot of airfares. But as we went down the road and we started at the beginning and we went through and then the Lord started to show me, hey, there is a thing called the internet now and you can minister to nations. I'm actually ministering to 198 countries this day by internet. Come on. See, the Lord's ways are not our ways. He is above and we are below. We do not uh, uh, um, have the full picture, but he reveals what he wants and wills as we go along. Paul the Apostle said it to the Corinthians, he said, we, he included himself, Paul the Apostle, who had uh, 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 extreme, extraordinary healing power and extreme revelation, so much that he had to have a, a thorn in the flesh, a demon given to him and assigned to him by God to keep him humble. Someone say amen. amen. Thorn in the flesh, a messenger of the devil assigned to him for the rest of his life. Listen to me. And what did Paul the apostle say? He said, I know. He said, we, we know in part and we prophesy in part. But the day will come when we see him and he sees us face to face that we will know as he knows us now. We now look in the mirror dimly. Someone say amen. amen. Woo! Hey? <coughs> Hallelujah. Oh! Oh! Thank you, Jesus. Before you were born, I anointed you. Hey? Before you were born. He's linked us up. I, I, I was at a quandrum. I, I was all over the show till I was 30 year old. I thought, no, 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 no. I, I, I'm a concrete labourer. I'm a, I, I'm a builder's labourer. I'm a Labrador, you know. I'm a, I, I, I'm a carpet layer and I did that for a while. No, I'm not. I, I'm a house uh, painter's labourer. I, I, I'm a, uh, you know... Ceramic Tyler's labourer. No, I'm not. I'm a, um, uh, I'm a farm worker. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a fruit picker. No, I'm not. I, I'm a brake technician's assistant. No, I'm not. I, I'm a fireman in the railway. No, that doesn't work either. I'm still not happy. Uh, how about the army? Well, we'll give that a go too. Uh, and, and I went on and on and on and on till I got linked up. With the real center link. <laughs> Woo! He's the centerpiece, hey? He's the centerpiece. He's the real center link. He's the real link in the center. There's one mediator between. There's only one real center link, hallelujah. And there's officials, and there's officials, and there's officials above officials. But Jesus is the great official above them all. He is the judge of the human race. He is the, the, the God of gods. He is the great I am. He's the one that said to Moses, just tell him the Christ sent you. Tell him I am sent you. Hey? Who am I going to say sent me? He didn't say, oh, it was the uh, Reverend Dr. Father, mother of the author interreticus that just passes by with some name that's 300 miles long. He said, no, I am. 
And then we go to the New Testament. Oh, we're getting a revelation here. I am the way, the truth, the life. I am Jesus. <laughs> he was talking back in the times of Moses. Hey, in the beginning hey, was the Word. The Word was with God and the Word was God. Let's turn in our Bible to Ephesians. Let's go to Ephesians. Hey? The writings of Ephesians, chapter 2. Ephesians 2. Hey? People, get ready. There's a train a coming. You don't need no baggage. Just get on board. All you need is faith. Come on, let's go to Ephesians. To hear the diesels, amen. You don't need no tickets. Just obey the Lord. Woo! <coughs> Glory. This is the faith walk. Hey? You don't need no ticket. Just obey the Lord. Then it'll all manifest. You'll find you. You'll find you at the cross. I found forgiveness. I found a friend. I found Lord Jesus. I found myself. Sister Valetta the other day, she was sieving through some paperwork and she come up with At the Cross. I wrote that poem song in 1989. And Sister Valetta come up with that. And that very afternoon, I didn't even know, I sent her the song oh. by, via YouTube. <laughs> Whoo! People, get ready. Oh, there's a train coming. Ah, oh, Jesus. You don't need no baggage. Just get on board. All you need is faith to hear the diesels. Hamid, oh, Jesus, hallelujah. You don't need no ticket. You just have to obey the Lord. Someone say amen. amen. We're in Ephesians 2. Hey, Ephesians 2. And I'm going to read, in Ephesians 2, I'm going to read verse Oh, hallelujah. Start at verse 11. Aye? Ephesians 2, starting at verse 11. Therefore, remember that you once Gentiles in the flesh were all called uncircumcision by what is called the circumcision made in the flesh by hand. That at that time you were without the Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were once far off have been made near by the blood of the Lamb. He nailed it, didn't he? He linked us back up. Hey, the real center link. Hey, hey, we were in the world, hopeless, hopeless, having no hope without God in the world, having no hope, hopeless. And I knew I was hopeless. I, I wasn't walking by faith. That's why I was hopeless. I wasn't walking by faith in the Son of God. Romans 5, verse 5. Romans 5, verse 5. People, get ready. Oh, there's a train coming. 
You don't need no baggage. Ah! Just get on board by faith. Obedience in the Son of God. Hallelujah. Eh? <laughs> Whoo! Romans 5.5. 5. Where does the hope that doesn't disappoint come from? Hey? Come on. By faith in the Son of God. Hey? By the power of the Holy Ghost. We access all the benefits. I tell you, it's benefits received. Through the real centre link, Jesus the Christ. The benefits received are countless, countless. Romans 5, verse 5. Hey? Shared abroad. The love of God is shared abroad in our heart by the power of the Holy Ghost. The hope we have does not disappoint. The hope we have comes from taking faith in the Son of God. People get ready. There's a train coming. <laughs> All you need is faith. Hey? All you need is faith, obedience. To get on board. You don't need no ticket. Just obey the Lord. Who I believe. Oh, I believe. Because I believe. Oh, I obey the Lord. Because I believe. That's the proof of my believing. I obey Him. Hey? I take faith in the Son of God. I rejoice that I'm no longer a stranger or a foreigner to the kingdom of God and to the, the, the uh, Israel of heaven, the commonwealth of Israel <laughs> in the spiritual. Hi. Right? Laying hold of the covenant promises by faith obedience. This is the sequel to the message of the cross. The message of the cross and the wondrous, the wonders and the wondrous blessings that the Lord has provided through the outworking of the cross for all on faith obedience. People get ready. Hey, Jesus is coming. There's a train coming. You lose faith, you've lost it all. If you lose faith. And many over the years that I've talked to, they think it's some sort of, oh, poor pitiful me. Oh, well, I lost faith, you know, as if God's going to feel sorry for them. Because they don't believe him. No, no, no. You will be left behind. You will not board the glory bound train. You will not be accepted if we do not come his way. For if anyone come any other way, they are no better than a liar or a thief. We must come by the true way. We must come by the door, Jesus, by faith obedience. Hey, by faith obedience. Ephesians 2.12 That at that time you were without the Christ, being aliens from and alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, strangers from the agreements that are made up of the promises of God, having no hope without God in the world. But now, in the Christ, 
you who were once far away from God have been made near. Oh, the message of the cross, hallelujah. I knew you before you entered the womb. Adam and Eve broke the link. They broke the connection. But Jesus came as the center of peace and the center link and the, the, the theme. He came to, to bring us back, to reconcile us to Father. And now, hallelujah, it's Psalm 23. <laughs> Let's read it. Woo! Psalm 23. The Lord is my center link. I shall not want. He lays me down in the paddocks green. Hallelujah. I'm sure Brother Samuel, who just came into the fellowship the other week, I'm sure he'll say amen to that, that it's a green paddock here and that he's being steered in the paths that are right. Hallelujah. <laughs> I think Brother Samuel heard uh, the Spirit of the Lord say, People, get ready. The Spirit was crying out to Brother Samuel saying, Samuel, get ready. Oh, there's a train coming. You won't need no baggage. Woo! Just get on board. Oh, all you need is faith to hear the diesels humming. You don't need no ticket. Just obey the Lord. Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is... Hey! Hey! Glory! The Lord is my shepherd. The Lord is my center link. Hallelujah. <laughs> I tell you, I'm at center link every day. <laughs> Woo! Early in the morning, hey? While the dew is still on the roses, hey? Woo! I go, hey? I go to the rock. He makes me to lie down in bindi eyes. No, in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my, he restores my soul. He, his name, verse 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil, for he is with me, and his rod, and his star, his rod, his word, and his star. The Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost. The crook of the shepherd. The star. The Holy Ghost. His rod. His word. It's all him, isn't it? He's accomplished it all. He nailed it at the cross. He, he intervened for us. He neutralized and made inactive the powers of darkness at the tree. Do we take faith in that? Do we believe that? Because if you don't believe it, it's all just words. If you believe it, you will receive the benefits thereof. It will be benefits received. <laughs> hey? From the center link to end all center links. The great mediator. And there is one mediator between, between Father and mankind. And that is Jesus 
the Christ. Let's read it. Psalm 23. Verse 4. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. That's the world. And you're walking through the world. And as you go through the world, you see it on their faces, don't you? It's not a five o'clock shadow because they haven't had a shave for two days. It's the shadow of death. It's only a shadow. The murder, the rape, the, the incest, the, the, the pedophiles, the, the muggings, the bashings. It's all a shadow of what's coming when all hell will break loose on the earth. We walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And the ignorant and the untrained in the spirit of God, they like to put that down in their theological mumbo jumbo. They like to put that down the valley of the shadow of death at some place somewhere. No, it's the world. We live in a dead world. But he has made us alive, remember. Colossians 2. Colossians 2, listen. 13. And you being dead in your sins and the un uncircumcision of your heart, Colossians 2.13, he has made alive together with him, having forgiven you of your sins. And we're alive again. And now we walk in the victory and we're alive. We're not insecure. We're not worried about, oh, my job. Oh, my this. Oh, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? Oh, I don't have a shepherd. Sounds like it. But I will say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He lays me down. I'm seeking first the kingdom of God. There's so many people today, they're out there breaking their backs in, 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 in the secular workforce so they can put up some building, uh, put up some house. That's their security, made out of timber or bricks. And then the, the floods come and the winds come and blow it all down. And the Lord lets the devil huff and puff and blows their straw house down. Someone say amen. But whereas the Spirit is saying, once again, people get ready. There's a train a coming. <laughs> you don't need no baggage or house to go. <laughs> you just need faith in the Son of God. You need faith in the Most High God. We need to believe. We need to believe. All things are possible, only believe in the word, what Jesus has written, that he's written that to us, and he's showing us, and explaining to us, this is it, this is it. It's like Sister Burrachai in Cambodia, she's new over there and she's struggling, really struggling over there. And she wrote me a letter and sent me an email. She said, I'm really battling here, Pastor. I need you to help me. You need to send something. You, 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 you need to write to me. You need to guide me here. I'm falling to pieces. Hallelujah. <laughs> so I waited on the Lord. I got the word. And I spoke as the oracles of God. And I sent her a bit of YouTube preaching. And now she's on eagle's wings. She's mounted up on eagle's wings. She's on fire. She's rejoicing. Can you say amen today? Hey? Because of the word. Live and living. Sharper than any two-edged sword. Severing bone from marrow and soul from spirit. Discerning the thoughts and the intentions of the hearts of men and women. Woo! That's our word. That's our Lord. Hey? People, get ready. There's a train coming. <laughs> We're not going to be here forever. We're citizens of heaven. We are citizens of heaven. Let's read it. Let, 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 let's go. Let's go over to citizens from heaven. 
and we are citizens from heaven, of heaven. Philippians, can we go there please? Philippians, chapter 3. People get ready. Oh, there's a train coming. Philippians 3.20 says, For our citizenship is in Brisbane. No, in heaven. From which we also eagerly wait for our Saviour, Jesus the Christ. Our citizenship is in heaven. Right? We got to keep that in our heart. We're passing through. No longer strangers and aliens to God, but rather pilgrims and sojourners in the earth. Passing through. All the wonders of the outworking of the cross. Right? The wonders of the outworking of the cross of the Christ. Praise his holy name. Citizens of heaven. People get ready. We're not going to another earth as we would know it. We're going to a new heaven and a new earth where righteousness lives, dwells, abides. Righteousness does not live here. Everywhere you go, there's crooked people, there's crooked magistrates, crooked police, crooked church leaders, crooked journalists, crooked, 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 living in crooked houses. Come on. We're heading to a new country where righteousness lives. It's everywhere. There's no unrighteousness where we're going. There's no hatred. There's no violence. There, there, there is no jealousy. There's no liar. There's no thief. There's nothing immoral. It's perfect and pure. The streets are paved with gold and the gold is transparent. Come on. There's no disease. There's no heartache. Jesus said he'll wipe every tear away. Come on. People, get ready. There's a train coming. All because of the message of the cross. We lay hold of this today. This is not pie in the sky. This is reality. This is the real deal. Hey? This is the real deal. That Jesus, he was the link. He is the link. He is the one. We don't blaspheme the Lord. We don't mock God by saying there's a priest that is human, that is helping us out. No. No, there's one priest. His name is Jesus. He's the great high priest. He is Jesus the Christ. He is the one that we go to Father in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, eh? we come and we thank you for the link, the centre point of our lives, the centre point of every conversation, deed and thought, the centre point, our theme, the Christ. We rejoice and we thank you, Lord, that you nailed it, that the Nazarene nailed it, that he made a way that's infallible. It's perfect. His word is pure and proven. Like silver in a furnace seven times. It cannot fail. The word of God is infallible. It's absolute. It's alive. It's living. It's indwelling. And it's leading. He is leading us. Psalm 23. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Because I'm linked up with the fearless one. I don't fear evil. What can evil do to me? That the Lord God will not allow. 
Nothing. Only the Lord will allow. He allows us to live or die. If God wills, we shall live tomorrow. If God wills. Not if you will. Not if you go to the health club and the spa. Not if you eat mung beans 24 sermon. But if God wills. So we need to stay in right standing. We need to be right with the centerpiece. We need to be right with Jesus as our mantle piece. We need Jesus exalted, lifted up, as Brother Isaiah and his family sang the song this morning, which was majesty. majesty. That's what this message is about today. Worship his majesty unto Jesus. Be all the glory and praise for what he has done in the spirit. What he does in the spirit. As we stand back in awe of our extraordinary life. Hey? I'm no ordinary man. I have an extraordinary plan. I'm not Captain Zero. The original superhero, no. Hey? Extraordinary life. Once we get a revelation of this, we're not digging around in the world. We're not, we're not looking for something in the world because it all just piles in the sight of Christ's name. It piles. It falls apart. Hey? We're waiting. Hey? We're, we're a bride in waiting. Hallelujah. We're waiting for the train to come. <laughs> Woo! We're getting ready because there's a train a coming. We're taking no baggage. We're just going to get on board. Woo! All we need is faith to hear the diesels. Amen. We don't need no tickets. We've sorted it out with the Lord. Now, we've sorted it out. <laughs> we know we're part. Listen to me. We know we're part of the covenant. We know we're part. Of Israel, the spiritual. Amen? Amen? Not bogged down with circumcisions of the flesh, but our heart has been circumcised by the great sword and the great scalpel, the word of God. And the proof of that is we're not looking in the world. We're not longing for the things of the world. We've been delivered. Our heart has been circumcised with the Saviour's scalpel, with the Word of God. Hey? Eh? That's alive and living, sharper than any two-edged sword. And he cuts off all that worldly fat and gristle. Hey? Eh? And we're left with a heart of flesh tender to him. Open to him, like Abraham we mentioned last week uh, or during the week when it related to faith, the righteousness of faith. And Abraham, God cried out and said, Abraham, 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 where are you? Fourteen times. No, he never. Genesis 22 says, verse 1, that God cried out, Abraham, bang, and he answered. That's how near he was. He was at the station. <laughs> Abraham was at the station when the Lord called him. Abraham answered. 
son and said, yes, Lord, here I am. And he was the father, Brother Clifford, father of fight. Come on. Are we ready? Are we at the ready? Hi. As Brother Palmer said, in England it's all piecing together. It's all coming together in the spirit. And Sister Roletta during the week reading about at the cross I found forgiveness. At the cross I found a prayer. And she's reading it. Next minute she's singing it. Because by the spirit I sent her the song. And then Brother Isaiah comes in this morning with the family and they're singing Majesty. And then Brother Palmer sends me an email and says, uh, uh, we, we need devotion to the Lord, un, 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 uh, uninterrupted devotion to the Lord, uninterfered, prime time for the paraclete. Hello? Hi? Undivided attention for the Almighty. And it all pieces together, doesn't it? That we're linked up. We're brought back. Reconciled. Hey? And now we have that ministry rubbing off on us. The ministry of reconciliation. Hallelujah. Hey? It's rubbing off on us. And we're out there trying to reconcile the Samuels and the Isaiahs and the Moses of the world. Right? And say, come on back. Because the train is coming. You don't need no baggage. Just get on board. All you need is faith to hear the diesels humming. You don't need anything else. Faith. Faith. <laughs> and you know what? He's already given you that. So you only really need to use it, don't you? All you need is faith to hear the diesels coming. But ah, oh, there's no diesels coming. I can't hear any diesel. You faithless thing. How much longer will I put up with you? Right? <laughs> How much longer will I put up with you? The Spirit of God will not strive with men and women forever. There'll come a day when the Lord said, that's enough. I've had enough of this rubbish. It's judgment time. And where are we going to stand? No pastor can help you then. No preacher, no prophet, no apostle or evangelist will help you or me at the judgment stand. Hey? There's a train to come. <laughs> Hey? And you ain't taking nothing with you. So you might just forget about wasting your money on possessions. <laughs> and, and houses that are going to get blown over and washed out and just turned to mud. <laughs> hey? Money spent well is spent on someone else. Hey? Woo! Come on. You won't need no baggage. You be just getting on board. <laughs> Woo! So he's the real center link. He's the one we rely on. From whence does my help come from? It comes from the Lord. Creator of heaven and earth. Hey. Right? Maker of all things seen and unseen. Hosanna in the highest place. Majesty. Worship his majesty. Hey. Brother Isaiah and his family singing along there. Strumming that guitar. They go, oh, well, it's not real fancy. Where's all the strobe lights? And the electric guitars and the drums bashing. Oh, it's not really fancy. But I tell you what, he nailed it. 
And he didn't know what I was going to preach today. <laughs> it's a bit like Jesus coming into town on the borrowed animal, isn't it? He just sort of coming, that's not our Messiah. How can he be the king? He doesn't even own his own camel train. Look at him. He's the son of that poor people down the road, Mary and Joseph. They're living in that optical realm again. That's why when someone gets up to sing, I just turn away. I, let, I, I, li, I, I, I listen uh, and watch with my ears. I'm going to get into the meat of it, you know. Not the optical, but the mathematical. Does it add up? Is it scriptural? Does it line up? Hey? Is, is, is it acceptable to the center link? Christ, the center link. <laughs> the great provider. Glory! Hey? Psalm 23. Verse 4, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. And we've got a lot of problems there, haven't we? You are with me. I'm lonely. Are you lonesome tonight? Do you miss me tonight? We're well, lonely. But Jesus is with you. If you're linked up with him, Jesus is with you. Hey? Jesus just cancels out excuse after excuse after excuse after excuse after excuse, doesn't he? Your rod and your staff comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. And the enemy comes and they're blabbing and la 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 la. You're this and you're that. And accusing the brethren of the Christ. La 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 la. He said, well, this is a tea party to me because the Lord has prepared the situation here. He'll sort it. He's prepared a table between my enemy and I because I'm, I'm registered. I'm registered at the real center line. I'm a citizen of heaven. <laughs> we are citizens of heaven. We're not bogged down with citizenship here. So many people think that's the end, don't they? If I can be just get to Australia and they're on boats coming here and, oh, it'll be so easy for me. And they find out it's a slave trade. <laughs> you work like a dog in this country. All we got here is, is the, the working poor. And it's getting worse day by day. As I prophesied in 2001, third world Australia. I prophesied that. 12 years plus. Third world Australia. <laughs> hey? They call it the lucky country. No, no, no. No. Lucky comes from that goddess, luck. And it is. There is a goddess attitude and matriarchal attitude in this country where women are out there today ruling the roost. They're wearing the boots and the men are wearing high heel shoes. Hey, come on. And the women are wearing tea boots. And the women are out there slogging, grogging, punching blokes out in the street with clothing on that leaves nothing for the imagination, I tell you. <laughs> nothing whatsoever. It's just uh, Sodom and Gomorrah revisited. <laughs> but we know as the people of God, there's a train coming to take us out of here with a shout and the voice of an archangel. Trumpet of God will sound. The dead in Christ will rise first. Then those who remain upon the earth will be taken up. Those who are alive in Christ, those who have a living relationship with Christ, will be taken up into the air 
to be with the Christ forever. Hey, there's a train coming. You won't need no baggage. Just get on board. All you need is faith. To hear the diesels humming. You won't need no ticket. Just obey the Lord. I believe. Oh, I believe. Because I believe. Oh, I obey the Lord. That's the proof of believing. Brother Samuel just rejoicing there. He's just locking in there. Oh, oh he's going. Glory, hallelujah. I'm coming, Lord. <laughs> Twelfth of the fifth, two thousand and thirteen. Linked up. The centerpiece of the universe. Jesus. The official above all officials. The great I am. Majesty. At the cross I found a friend. <laughs> Undivided attention for the Christ. Piece together, puzzle, piece by puzzle, piece. Coming together to culminate in majesty. Worship him. Praise him. The message and the wonders of the cross. And the Nazarene nailed it, did he not? Someone say amen. amen. Thank you today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.